Hello, welcome to this week's Dividend Cafe, and it is the end of February, and we're kind of getting into the beginning of March, so we're recording with the market closed on Thursday, March 1, and obviously I have no idea what happens Friday, March 2nd, I say that all the time, but uh, I want to kind of talk about the month of February isolated, although here today we had quite a dramatic day, and I'm going to make a comment on it real quick because it's very important to me. More or less, today's action, Thursday, March 1, talking about one day in the market, the Dow ended up down 420 points. We were up about 100. We then were down about almost 600, so nearly a 700-point swing, ended up down 420. The entirety of the downturn was the announcement from the Trump administration that they were uh, uh, excuse me, implementing, uh, imposing, a 25% protective tariff on imported steel and aluminum. So I'm not going to hold anything back. It's an utterly idiotic idea, and the market responded accordingly. Uh, we have to date, by the way, had none of these, these things take place with the Trump administration. Um, the, the campaign was filled with threats of tariffs and trade wars. Nothing has come of it whatsoever. So this is the first rather... Um, rather substantial movement towards more protectionism. And, and for someone who would ask me uh, what the bright side may be in terms of markets and the economy, um, there is none. Uh, it, it has no upside. And, and I will just simply tell you that monitoring the retaliation from other countries that could uh, exacerbate a trade war and monitoring the infectiousness of the idea, it comes from an ideology of protective isolationism in the, in the administration. There aren't a lot of them there, but there are some, and they've won the debate here for now. They haven't won the debate, but they won the policy argument. Um, and we have to keep a very close eye on it because this could have a very interesting cascading effect. So those of you used to my uh, optimism, I'm optimistic uh, because optimism is generally the right ideology uh, and personality and perspective to have on things. If you're wondering why I don't have a glasses half full angle on this, it's because uh, that's how seriously I take this issue and what I think that free trade means for global economic health and prosperity. But let's talk about the month of February before today's little protectionist uh, snafu. Uh, February was the first month for the S&P 500 in 15 months that was negative. That had been the longest winning streak in market history, uh, or at least as long as they've been recording that data, okay? Um, you got to go back to uh, October of 16, since the S&P had a down month, and it was barely down then. Um, and in that period of time, even after February, the S&P still up something like 36%. By the way, as of the end of February, in which markets were down between 3 and 4%, depending on if you're talking about just price return or total return, where the dividend gets added back in, and depending on whether or not you're talking about the Dow or the S&P, just basically somewhere in that kind of down 3.5% range, um, you still were up you know, over 1% year to date in both ind indexes, Dow and S&P, for the year. Uh, and that was as of the end of February, okay? So that's how positive the month of January was and how quick a lot of the give back in February. And by now you probably know the story of February. At the beginning of the month, data came out from January. The wage growth number year over year was up 2.9%. Markets sort of panicked around the idea of maybe inflation coming on stronger than we thought. We had that particular week where there were two days in one week down over 1,000 points. Uh, markets um, just sort of exacerbated into a significant panic attack that I talked about, wrote about quite a bit. Then we kind of bounced around for the rest of the month, some big up days, some big down days, so certainly more volatility back. And again, as I pointed out last week and we'll write about as long as I have to, bond market is totally taken over. Bond market is taking over in the context of what inflation expectations may be. It's taking over in the context of what Federal Reserve policy may be and what it may not be. But the bond market's driving the ship. Well, you had the 10-year bond yield uh, get all the way up to about 2.95% this month. It never did crack 3%. But, you know, we ended the year at about 2.5%. So you've seen it go from roughly 2.5% to roughly 3%. It's come down a little here today. 
That's a big movement up in interest rates, and that has an effect throughout the economy and the price of money. So uh, there is a very positive angle to this, and there's some negatives, or at least just sort of question marks to look at. The positive is quite simply that um, you had a significant amount of money flow out of the equity market in the month of February each week. That very first week of the month, obviously most dramatic, tens of billions of dollars between ETFs and mutual funds. More money continued to flow out throughout the rest of the month. And so these are these contrarian indicators that indicate a continuation of the bull market. You don't have bull markets and as other people are selling them. They end when, when bullishness and euphoria reaches excessively high levels. So I think that the markets uh, acted like markets do this month. And I think that uh, a lot of investors act like the way a lot of investors often act. And, and that provides for some normalcy and opportunity. That's the way I'll put it, okay? Um, not a lot of places to hide in the month. The uh, technology sector was about broken even within the S&P 500. Um, some sectors were down more than others. You had energy, consumer staples, and telecom were all down. Um, but I really do believe the idea that interest rates are bubbling is, is simply untrue. And I really believe that the idea that interest rates at these levels inevitably lead to a corrective force in the equity markets, I think, is untrue. I do think all of the above spells some greater volatility for the foreseeable future. So right now I'm going to be watching uh, the threat of a protectionist trade war just as much as I have to watch Chairman Powell, who, by the way, this week testified at the Senate Finance Committee for the first time as the chairman of the Federal Reserve. I thought he did a, a fine job. And uh, so we got to watch the Fed. we got to watch uh, trade policy. Uh, there will be no earnings reports really in the month of March because the first quarter is still ending. Then we'll get into April, and, and uh, I expect earnings in Q1 will be very strong. All the stimulative effects that we expected from tax reform continue. And when I say continue, I believe they are uh, moving on even higher than people had expected. So a lot of positive things to say in the economy, uh, question marks around policy, and then I think uh, fear that, and uncertainty around inflation, and therefore the bond market and therefore the stock market. That's kind of the theme right now. So we do what we think we do well in this type of situation. We stay prudent. We're grateful for our moderate exposures that are not excessive, that are not overdone. The fact that we had been kind of relatively underweight equities going in. Um, we make no attempt to try to fully time it, but we monitor our valuation disciplines. And uh, we will see where things go from here. That's uh, the story. Please reach out with any questions. Uh, we encourage you to listen to our Advice and Insights podcast. You can subscribe to that at uh, iTunes or Google Play or whatever, whatever your podcast player is. And read DividendCafe.com. I think there's about five charts this week, maybe four charts, all giving you some information you might find interesting about how stocks actually really do perform when interest rates go up. And I'll just tell you this. It might be a little different than you are seeing on the media. Okay. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. Email anytime. Take care.